Hi class, this is a continuation of lesson 50 where we are just going to work through some more examples of acid-base neutralization reactions. You can look back at the first video for more notes on acids and bases. The final thing we'll want to do is discuss the neutralization reaction. So when an acid and a base react in a double replacement reaction, it can also be called a neutralization reaction. In this reaction, the acid and the base will always neutralize to form a salt, which is an ionic compound, and water. So in a double replacement reaction between an acid and a base, we're going to have the hydrogen from the acid combined with the hydroxide from the base to form water. Remember when we were balancing, we sometimes called water HOH. You can still do that here. And then the remaining ions will combine to form the ionic compound. So our positive ion is typically written first, so we'll write sodium and then chloride. The ionic compound must always form so the total charge of the new compound is zero. Let me show you how a couple more neutralization reactions happen. So what we know is that the hydrogen of the acid will combine with the hydroxide of the base and they will make water. So on the product side, I'm going to write H OH. So water, H2O, can be written as H2O or HOH. And whatever is left over, which are the ionic substances here, lithium, and then this is sulfate. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion. You can see it here on reference table E. So sulfate is a whole ion that has a charge of minus two. So I'm gonna put it in parentheses and write a minus two up top. And then lithium is a metal, which I'm going to find on my periodic table. Lithium is a metal and it has a charge of plus one. So what I know is here I'm going to put the formula for the ionic compound. Now since lithium is plus one and sulfate is minus two, I need to arrange this so the new charge is zero. So I'll need another lithium. So lithium sulfate has this formula and here I have plus water. Um, so this is the salt, and this is the water. So here we know that we have an acid and a base make salt and water. Let's try the next example. So in this next example, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out which is an acid and which is a base. Again, to find that out, we can use our reference table. Here we have reference table K and reference table L. So I see my base is potassium hydroxide. So the hydroxide from the base will combine with my hydrogen from my acid. And they're going to make water as a product. So that's H, O, H. Notice how water is equally acidic here in red as it is basic here in blue. And then the potassium and the nitrate will have to come together. So we'll use our reference table to find out the charges of each. And so potassium is a metal, its charge is plus one. And nitrate is a polyatomic ion. Remember, you can find the polyatomic ions on reference table E. Um, here you can see I have nitrate. You can also find the, referen the polyatomic ions used in acids and bases in reference table F. So uh, both places are good places to look, and here we can see nitrate. 
I like how in table F they put it in parentheses. So nitrate has a charge of minus one, potassium has a charge of plus one. We'll put them together here. They have equal but opposite charges, so we'll just put them together, write a plus sign, and here what we have, we have base and acid make salt and water. So hopefully now you're getting the hang of this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look for the acid. Acid usually starts with H, so here's my acid. And bases usually end in OH, so here's my base. I'm gonna bring those two things together. Those will make HOH, which is water. And then I'm going to put together the remaining pieces. So sodium element number 11 has a charge of plus one and fluorine element number nine has a charge of minus one. So I'm just going to place the ions together. So again, when we summarize this, you can see this was a base and an acid and it made a salt, which is another word for an ionic compound and water. Pause the video and you try the next example, and then I will go through it. So here we have hydroxide, it's already in parentheses. So there's our base is hydroxide, and this is sulfuric acid, remember that the acids are found on reference table K, so you don't have to guess what's an acid. Again, you can see sulfuric acid here, and since it has more than two capital letters, you know part of it is ionic, a polyatomic ion, so you can find that over here in reference table F, or you can find it on reference table E above. So here we have sulfate for our, the acid. So I'm going to circle the OH from the base and the H from the acid and together those are going to make HOH for water. And then we're just going to bring together what's left over. We have to look at the charges. So my reference table tells me that that sulfate has a minus two sign so it's a minus two charge and calcium element number 20 is a plus two. So they're equal yet opposite. So we're just gonna push them together. They will already have a neutral compound. And the only thing that is really left to do here is to balance. So remember we balance to make sure that the same number of atoms are on each side. Here I have one calcium and one calcium, so calcium's good, but I have two OHs here and only one. So I should add a coefficient of two in front of my water. That two makes it so I have equal numbers of OHs. I have two hydrogens and two hydrogens with this coefficient, and um, I have one sulfate and one sulfate. So again, uh, I usually write water as HOH. It is totally acceptable on the regions, but if you wanna sum it up to water, that is fine as well. So lastly, we have a base and an acid. Make salt, which is just a fancy word for ionic compound, and water. This concludes the practice session associated with lesson number 50 on acids and bases. Make sure you've taken good notes. Write down any questions you have and ask them so we can discuss them. Complete your homework on Google Classroom and make sure your materials are in your backpack so you are prepared for class. I'll see you soon.